Now in this session, we'll be focusing on fewer clients and high ticket revenue. And we will try to avoid the volume of clients which give us a low ticket revenue. That comes to the question that what is the problem with volume of clients? Now, in order to get business, I used to say yes to any kind of request from any client, even if I had not performed the task before. That meant a lot of time in learning and then completing a service. And you would agree with me that I would not be, even you, if you were in my position, you would not be able to charge confidently because you've not done it before. So the volume of clients reduces time to scale a business because you have work all the time. When will you make sales to scale your business? Before we dive in, let me know where are you tuning in from? Okay, Italy, Flamingo, Canada, France, Malaysia, Belgium, Poland, and the chat is just on fire. Thank you so much for joining in. It really boosts up my energy. And right now, I love the energy that you're pouring into the chat. Let me share with you where I am tuned in from. I'm speaking to you from India. My name is Manik Kaur. I have been running a successful web, WordPress web design agency for the past two years. But trust me, it wasn't a cakewalk. I had my ups and downs and learned the hard way how to scale a WordPress agency. And that's exactly what I would be covering in my session. How to scale a web design business even if you are a freelancer or you have just started. And this would be more focused on no-code websites because I've reached here just with Elementor and WordPress. And I'm ready to pour all my experience in this one session. Let's dive in. So, you know, when I started my business, the pandemic had just hit and my business was very new. And I was on a hunt for clients just to build my portfolio. And while I was working in the industry, I realized and I faced these two problems. Give me a thumbs up in the chat box if you relate with me. It was hard to get clients. And even though I was getting clients, these clients were very low paying clients. Does that happen with you too? Okay, I see a lot of thumbs up. Don't worry, we'll come to a solution for this problem. Now the question is, why was I getting low paying clients? The first reason is industry rates. Too much competition in the market and everyone is trying to onboard the client with the lowest price possible to get to that particular project. I will share a screenshot with you wherein a girl is asking for a WordPress developer. And you see there are 73 comments below the post. That means approximately 50 people are bidding for the project. Now everyone is bidding for the project, so they would try to put the lowest price there. And of course, the client wants the work in the most affordable price. And this is why the industry rates are being destroyed. The second reason is market value, which also correlates to our first reason, that is industry rates. If you have been in the industry for a while, you know, skills have become disconnected from prices. WordPress designers and freelancers depend on platforms like Upwork and Fiverr, which is giving way to the gig culture across the globe. Now, while I was preparing for this presentation, I also spoke to industry designers and tried to understand what kind of challenges do they face and do they relate with me what I'm facing? Am I, uh, are all the people on the same page? You can just see the chat on the right hand side where the person talking to me tells me that he is getting clients and most of the clients come from Fiverr. But the problem is all of them are low paying clients. So he's stuck between the circle of low paying clients and volume of clients. The third reason is websites are one and done projects. Like I mentioned about the gig culture catching pace, because of the gig culture consuming the entire internet space, projects are only one and done interaction with the client. You see a request, you go forward to them, you deliver a project to them, and the interaction is over. That's like two weeks or a month at max. You never try to interact or do business with that client. There is no repeating business with one client because of the gig culture, and that's a problem. This next thing is clients are shopping for a website. What exactly do I mean by clients are shopping for a website? 
you would agree to me when I say websites are oxygen to any business today. And a lot of clients just need a website up and running for their brand. And that is when they are practically shopping for a website. Let me share an example with you. I recently got a call from one of the clients who said, I'm looking for a cheap website. He said so because he only wanted a website that serves his purpose as a brochure. Now, if we keep working with such clients, we are again going to be stuck in the circle of low ticket revenue and maybe less clients also. And this is the most important. Clients feel website designers do not reside, re derive results for them. We do shape their thoughts into reality and put up beautiful websites. But they feel that once the websites are up and running, somebody else is going to get the leads for them. Somebody else is going to make sales and marketing for them. So that's why they have a feeling that web designers do not derive results for them. These are five points that I feel has landed us into these low paying client circle. Let's take a quick view. Industry rates, market value, websites are one and done projects, clients are shopping for a website, and clients feel web designers would not derive results for them. Let me, in the, let me know in the chat box, which one do you relate most with? And let us see that while I was in my business and stuck in this cycle, what was my ultimate goal? It was reoccurring clients, premium and quality clients that I get consistently. And of course, as a result of all these three, I wanted a successful business that was scalable. So let me share with you a case study wherein uh, when I started out, this is a screenshot when I did first of few my website, first few websites where I charged $55 for a website back in July 2020. This was again a one time project and that time my agency was called Diginetic. And then in 2021, I charged 30,000 rupees or $500 for the same kind of work in May 2021. And this was a reoccurring client. This was a retainer. Now the question is, what did I do to make this shift? What did I exactly do to make the shift from a small amount to a higher amount? I implemented a five-step process to charge higher prices from fewer clients that I would be sharing with you in this session. Now, in the next slide, I'll be sharing a small preview of all the five stages. And then later on, I'll be explaining each one of them individually. To begin with, the stage one is industry selection. Find a gap in the market and try to fill that gap. The second one is solution. Solve a specific business problem. Don't say yes to every request and every client. The third one is results. Describe the results, not your services. As we spoke that clients do not expect results from us. So let us you know, tell them that we can derive results for them and not just talk about our services. The fourth stage is serving. Shift away from selling to serving. This is going to be ticket to high ticket clients. And the last one and the most important is pricing. Now this is where the entire game will change. Let's take a quick view. There are five stages, industry selection, solution, results, unique offer, and pricing. And all these steps can be implemented starting today if you listen to it very carefully. Let's get started. The first one is industry selection. Now, as I told you, in this stage, I understood that if someone is already looking for a website, it's too late to offer a high ticket solution they're probably shopping for a website, like I mentioned. So in this stage, what did I do differently? I looked at all my past clients that I had served till now. And I asked myself some questions. Which client I enjoyed most working with? Which client paid me a higher price than the others? Which industry did I understand the best? And what kind of results did I get for them? When I asked myself these questions, I came out with a point that, the clients that I had worked with, I resonated one with the most in the education industry that paid me a good price higher than the others. And I also enjoyed working with these kind of clients. So I decided I'm going to be working in the education industry. Now the 
now you might ask me that you know i'm a fresher i'm just starting out so what do i do so you can use this to your advantage in the very beginning to fix the gap you need to approach clients when they are thinking something like this we are not getting the leads we need we are not able to generate sales i'm exhausted i don't know what else to do when you see a problem and you approach them with a solution that is when they are ready to pay the price that brings us to the second stage solution now solution is not designing a website that is just a task the solution is strategy and skills together which brings business outcomes for your client so back in 2020 if somebody asked me i would say that you know uh, you want a website i'll do it for you and 2021 if somebody asks me like one of you mentioned in the chat i asked them what is the purpose of your website what exactly do you want from your website now this solution has three steps first is the design which is our primary skill the second one is the marketing tool which is going to derive results for the client and the third one is the strategy which is a combination of design and marketing tools now I used the same combination of strategy and skills to serve the clients in the education industry and get results for them. This brings me to my third stage, which is results. Now let's talk about results and not the services. Results are always measurable and significant. Like I told you back in 2020, I would just say you want a website, I'll design it for you, any industry, any business, I'll design it for you. Now in 2021, I've, when I've learned my lesson, I tell them, what is the purpose of designing a website? Is it more leads? Is it more sales? Is it more Zoom calendar bookings? What exactly do you want from your website so that they know that the ultimate goal is deriving results from the website? The fourth stage is serving. Now, when you shift from selling to serving, you open door to reoccurring clients. This is where you leverage high ticket reoccurring sales from your clients. What I was doing was I would get the website project by offering it at an affordable price. Like I, sh I had uh, shown you the screenshot. I had delivered a website for $55. And then we saw another screenshot wherein there were 73 to 80 people bidding for that one project and then try to upsell the maintenance and the marketing package. This would sound something like this. Hey, I'm ready to do the website for you. And once the website is done, I will do the marketing for you at this price, or I'll give you a package of domain and hosting for this price. But what's the problem with this? Let's say I charge $100 for a website and then offer them a hosting and a maintenance package for $70 or $80. Most clients will say no because the upsell looks expensive in comparison to the main service that is designing a website. Now this package could be anything, any kind of marketing package or any kind of domain and hosting package. Now this brings us to the point, what do we do if we are in such a situation? And what did I do at that point of time? I changed my offer. I started approaching with the client. I started approaching the client with the marketing strategy, not with the affordable website. Remember in the solution section, we were talking about how to solve a specific problem. I told them, hey, I can get you consistent leads for your language school, but would need to rework on your website to get that kind of results. So up till here, these four steps, do they make sense to you? Let me know in the chat box and then we'll go ahead. Let's get, before we go to the last part, let's take a quick review. First is the industry selection. People are not looking for someone who can just implement a task, rather someone who can get results. The second one is solution. Design your solution first, which is a combination of design, marketing, and strategy. Third one, wrap your marketing around the outcome of your solution, not your services. Getting consistent leads is the solution, not just designing a website. The fourth one, Focus on marketing retainer and then upsell the website. And the question is, how do we price it? This is the most important one. And that brings me to my fifth stage, which is value pricing. 
Now, we generally price our rates and how I did in the starting was hourly rates or maybe the market value or the industry rates or a fixed cost or a one-time cost. And I'm sorry to break it to you. And I'm sure people who are in the room who are much experienced would agree with me that this will always keep us in the current position. We will not be able to scale our business. Instead, we should price our services on the basis of value we provide to the client. Now, how do we define value? How do we measure value? What is the cost of this value? This can be seen in three ways. First is the increased value that you, when you approach your client, you immediately tell them, I'll get you consistent leads in 30 days, or maybe I will 2x or 3x your revenue. That's increased value. The second one is cost savings. If you are also getting them the sales and designing the website, that means you're saving some cost there. And the third one, and the most important is perceived value. That means how much the client needs the solution. And this is where the game changes. Now, what is perceived value? Let me give you an example. Let's say you are, an, you are at an airport and you're hungry. You see a restaurant and you see a sandwich being sold for $100. That's not the usual price in a store outside the airport. But you still buy it because you're hungry. That's the solution that you need at that moment. That's perceived value. Now, there are some people in the room who would say that they're just starting out. We have just started our journey. What should we do in order to build a portfolio before implementing these five stages? How do we get there? There are some advices that I'd like to give you. The first one is design your own website as a masterpiece. Because when you approach people, they are going to at least ask for one website that you have done. Now, if that is your own website that serves as a place where people can contact you, and also if you're doing your own website, you'll put a heart and soul into it. So your own website should be a masterpiece. Number two, people who are starting out, my advice would be serve multiple clients and see which industry interests you the most. Try to focus on one industry, but don't restrict yourself in at least in six months of your business so that you do not later try multiple clients and then the third one is use storytelling marketing i would go on and on but i'm restricted to a little bit of time so i'll just share a quick story when i started out i got my first client from a whatsapp story that's how people are watching they may not they may not respond immediately they may not talk to you or appreciate you but trust me they are watching so whichever social media channel you are using just keep telling people what you are doing in your business how you are progressing and do that in a storytelling format i promise you you'll get maximum of your clients from there and then the fourth one is actively engage with the community that's the best thing to do and one more question that might pop up in minds of people who are just starting out, who are just building their portfolio, where can I get clients? Like I mentioned, you will get your clients from social media, but they are everywhere. Clients are everywhere. Use a social media platform that suits you the best. Is it Instagram? Is it LinkedIn? Is it some other, or maybe WhatsApp, like I mentioned, whichever social media platform that suits you the best. And to give you a bonus tip, you can register on Elementor Experts. I also get a lot of my clients from that platform. All right. So now I'll open the room for questions. Before doing that, let me just take a quick view of what are the takeaways from the session. After implementing these five stages, you will have a unique message. The focus will be on reoccurring clients. You will be working with high ticket clients and you will have a solid marketing plan. If you wish to get in touch with me, this is where you can get in touch with me. And now the room is open for questions. You can ask questions. This is me, or founder of WebEasy, thanking you so much for giving your time and listening to me. I'm opening the room for questions. Okay, uh, what is a quick outline for using storytelling? Any cycles you can go through? So if I say, a, you know, quick examples, maybe 
uh, you start your day, say, so you know, you can put a story, just text, no videos, no pictures. You can just put a story that, uh, let's say I talk about today. So I was to, you know, present at Elemental Community Day. So I would have got up in the morning and say uh, that I'm super excited for the day today. I'll be presenting at Elemental. I'll be sharing how to scale a WordPress business. And then in the middle of the day, I can say that uh, my presentation is up and all the checks have been done. I'm just waiting for the time to come. And so and so thing, and you can just put a build up so that by the time you put out the real thing, people are actually excited for that stuff. And uh, you know, you can use communities like local messengers that work in your country. I mentioned WhatsApp because that's the one that works most in my country. So you can use local messengers that works the best in your country. Okay, do you close the leads on the same day or do you provide them a grace period for the follow-up? So here I'd like to say that whenever I get a query for a website, I never close them on the same day. I get them on a call, whether it's a Zoom meet or a Zoom call. I try to understand what do they want from me. And then I do a check whether I'm able to deliver that and tell them that what is the price of those services. Put a contract in place, get the contract signed, and that is when I onboard a client. Because when you immediately onboard, there is always a miscommunication of how you have to serve them on what exactly would you be giving. So uh, a crisp answer to that would be, until and unless my contract is signed, I never onboard a client. Okay, uh, Anthony asked that how do you track the leads, customers that you generate via email or phone call? So you can always have an Excel sheet wherein you can put the data of whatever people are coming in and then you can just write yes or no. So, uh, yes means that you've onboarded the client and no means that the client did not convert. Thank you so much for listening to me and uh, thank you so much for giving me your time. I'm a part of the uh, Elementor experts as well. I'm also a part of the Elementor community. So I'm always available to interact with you and to talk to you and grow as a community and web designers. Thank you so much.